more of the same. Uh, George Galloway. As I was saying, Madam Deputy Speaker, even in Parliament you can't be a maiden twice. But I hope you'll permit me a moment of my eight to pay tribute to my predecessor, Tony Lloyd, as he then was when I first met him at the Labour Party conference more than 40 years ago. He, a young left-wing engineering union delegate, me, even younger, from the Transport and General Workers Union. We became fast friends then and remained so through all the decades. We marched together against nuclear weapons, against the repeated massacres in Gaza at the hands of the Israeli occupation forces. We voted in the lobbies together against the renewal of Trident submarines. Tony Lloyd was a significant figure that should never be forgotten in this House and certainly will not be forgotten in the greater Manchester arena where he was born and where he practiced his sincere political artistry over so many years. The Labour Party, of course, is not the party today that it was back then. And in this speech and in later speeches, I hope, if God spares me and you allow me to catch your eye. But Tony Lloyd, notwithstanding the very poor order in which the Labour Party is held in the town of Rochdale, the only thing that unites the entire town of Rochdale is antipathy towards the Labour Council in the beautiful new refurbished town hall. And that's something we intend to change in just a few weeks from now at the local elections. But notwithstanding the poor order of the Labour Party in the town, everyone respected and admired Tony Lloyd, Sir Tony Lloyd, as he was to become. And I'm grateful to you for allowing me to begin my address uh, on this, the seventh time I have been elected to Parliament with today. The Minister was bright and breezy, but frankly, all the spices in Rochdale could not give flavour to what can only be described as a nothing burger of a budget. An absolute nothing burger and the response from the so-called opposition in this House equally vacuous. The shadow minister bridled when the SNP accused them of accepting the Tory spending limits. But he had no right to bridle because everything that is being said by the leader of the opposition, by the shadow chancellor of the Exchequer, accepts the economic orthodoxies of the Conservative government. And look where these economic orthodoxies have led us. The minister talked breezily about children getting help where they need it, busy doctors and nurses in the NHS. What about us in Rochdale? We have a new infirmary that's like a ghost town, Madam Deputy Speaker. Do you know that in Rochdale you cannot give birth? No one in the town of Gracie Fields will ever again be able to say they were born in Rochdale unless, unfortunately, in a taxi on the way to Bury or on the way to Oldham. We don't even have a postcode. Our postcode is OL a subdivision of Oldham, this town which was once one of the most prosperous in England, is now one of the poorest, abandoned, not just by the government, but abandoned by the Mayor of Greater Manchester, for whom I have no animus, quite the contrary, at least until recent weeks. But he has to understand that he's the Mayor of Greater Manchester, not 
just the mayor of Manchester. What about the towns around Manchester who get the wrong end of the stick? Imagine a town where you can't be born. Imagine a town where you can't die. They've taken away the A&D service also during my campaign in which I garnered more votes than the Conservatives, than Labour, than the Liberal Democrats, than the Reform Party, all of them put together, proving my point, that actually outside in the country, most people feel a wish for a plague on both of their houses. Yeah, yeah. Two cheeks of the same backside is the most popular phrase I have ever coined <laughs> because it so aptly describes not just the general political situation but the debate on this very budget itself. The truth is you can't even be banged up in Rochdale. If you get arrested, there's not even a police cell that they can take you to. In the course of the campaign, an old lady in a care home fell ill, took a turn. The ambulance took 45 minutes to reach her and didn't know where it was going to take her. And neither did her relatives gathered around anxiously because the ambulance driver had to find where, which A and E in the greater Manchester area they could take her to. If it took her 45 minutes to get to another a and &E, I've no idea what might have become of her. We are a town that has been abandoned by the state. We're a town that's increasingly abandoned by the mayor of Greater Manchester. Half of the children, 50% of the children in two of the biggest wards in the parliamentary constituency are officially living in poverty. Half. What was there in the budget for them, Madam Deputy Speaker? All the chuntering and joshing and japing matched by the other side. What was in the budget for those poor children needing help but no help forthcoming? Levels of child poverty in Rochdale are amongst the worst in the entire country. My goodness, 14 seconds left. How it f flies. I just want to say that having given both parties a good spanking, on the 29th of February, I've got my boots on to give them a good kicking any time I catch your eye. Uh, James Wilde. Thank you very much.